I want to talk quickly about laptop batteries. In the old days, um, power walls used to be made up of recycled laptop batteries. That was the only abundant source of 18650s. But those days are over. We can get uh, 18650s from hundreds of sources, and they're available new, barely used, excellent condition. And more importantly, you can buy them where you buy a large batch of the batteries and you end up with the same make and model. And that really helps when you're processing batteries. You can test a few, know that they're good, and then process all of them without testing every single battery if they come from the same batch from the same packs. Um, you know, battery hookup has these um, modem batteries. These are what my very first power wall was made out of this exact battery from battery hookup. You know, battery clearing house is selling these um, these LG brand new modem packs, and these are what I am using for my second um, for my second power wall. I'm using this pack. These are brand new, unused. Um, and they're, you know, batteries are running as cheap as 50 cents a battery um, for name brand, lightly used or unused batteries. And I would not buy anything other than these sort of bulk batch batteries where you can get a lot of the same battery to build your power wall. It just makes life a lot simpler where you don't have to test every battery and you don't have to worry that you might have duds in uh, mixed amongst your other batteries. Let's talk about processing cells quickly. These are the modem packs that I have. I have 200 of these modem packs, which is 600 batteries. And uh, the current expansion of my power wall will take 560 batteries. So I'll have a few extras. Um, these are three 18650s in a pack, and um, these are actually pretty easy to open. Um, uh, some modem packs that you get are sonically welded and cannot be just cracked open. And often you have to take a tool like this, and, and I just take a piece of steel and bend over a nice lip, and I sharpen that lip a little bit, and then you put the lip right on the seam, and then you hit it with a hammer, and that, uh, can crack open a pack pretty easily. Um, but these ones honestly are pretty easy to open. Um, I've had good luck just sort of hitting them directly on the corner and popping them out. Then um, use a plastic tool to sort of break the batteries out. Oftentimes there's glue or double-sided tape holding them in. These ones are not too bad at all to process. And you can pretty much rip off the BMS and that and you know, wear gloves. And don't worry too much about, you know, an electrical short or anything like that. It's there when you process cells, there will be a few electrical shorts that you might even get a couple sparks. You might accidentally touch, um, you know, your pliers might accidentally touch between the positive and the negative as you clean the nubs off. These things happen. Um, it's unlikely that you're actually going to, you know, fully short circuit anything and, and cause it to go into meltdown or whatever. Um, obviously, you know, probably don't do this on your kitchen table just in case, you know, do it in your garage or where you, with a concrete floor where you can throw a bad cell on the floor if something did happen, but it's not likely to happen if you, you know, take some basic precautions and know what you're doing. But anyways, you know, do a quickly cut off the nubs from the, the welding and rip the batteries apart. These are flush cutters. Uh, these are Xeron flush cutters and they are amazing. Um, now, when I first processed cells, I used to, you know, take a Dremel and, and completely like clean up all the nubbins 100% and make the tops completely smooth, but I no longer do that. I just hit it with the flush cutter as best I can and call it good enough. Um, the, the reason is, I mean, you're going to end up, I'm, you know, I sold, I'm going to be soldering these battery packs, so I'm going to be putting a big blob of solder right back on the top of these packs. And, um, you know, a little bit of nubbin actually just helps the solder stick, gives it something for the solder to, to bond to. So I really don't mind a little bit of solder on the, you know, I, I really don't mind a little bit of nubbin on the top here for the solder to stick to. Now, when you're breaking packs, you inevitably might damage the, um, the wrapping, especially if they glue the packs together. If that happens, 
try hard to salvage the wrapper. There's nothing worse than rewrapping batteries. You can do it, but I'll, then you don't know what kind of battery was underneath and, and you don't know if it was a, you know, what make model or, or amperage. So I try to keep the, um, I try to keep the, the original cell wrappers as best I can. And if I do tear a cell wrapper, I actually use a little piece of scotch tape uh, just to stop any tearing and, and sort of keep the wrapper together. And, um, you know, I'm able to salvage 95% of all wrappers um, without too much problem. Um, now again, some modem packs, they will glue the packs in and it's gonna, you're gonna damage 50% of the of this of the um, the wrappers and if that's the case then you will it, you know then I just pretty much rewrap everything um, but like I said if you can salvage the uh, wrapper the, you know try and salvage the wrapper as best you can uh, let's see here any little bit of glue clean clean up any glue that's good. And last one here. And this one has a bit of stickiness on it. That'll happen. I try and rub it off. Um, I like to try and clean my batteries pretty much 100%. Okay. Once your batteries are processed, I'm going to take your mobile here. You have to charge and test your batteries. You can see over here, I have the batteries on the charger and the testers. Um, these Lito Carlas are my testers. Um, they're running tests right now. I do not test all my batteries. I test random batches. And, and that's because I buy... I like to buy my batteries all from the same source coming out of the same packs so they all should perform similarly. So I do not test every single cell. I test random batches. Um, that's how I did my first power wall up there and that's how I'm doing this power wall. So, but I do charge up all my batteries. Um, so these batteries are all charging. Here you can see I got a, this is a 12 battery rig here running through the ISDT at eight amps, charging these up. And then I got some, uh, you know, uh, a Nightcore and a, a E-Fest just to charge up my batteries. And like I said, these are ones running tests. Once they're done, they go in the bucket. And um, they'll sit in here for a few days while I finish processing my cells. And in a few days, I will um, put a, a, a multimeter on these batteries. Make sure every, every battery is sort of above 4.1 volts. Any batteries that have dropped much below that probably are a bad cell or, and have too much internal resistance but if they kind of hold their voltage over a few days then I'm going to consider them good and I know that these are all in theory brand new batteries and all from the same packs and all from a good manufacturer so that's good enough for me.